Here he is only four and ten as coming in now is Fred Carrillo and he'll step into the ring out of nearby Patterson, New Jersey. Undefeated welterweight and it should be interesting to see what this young 21 year old brings to the ring here at Fernwood. And brings a pretty good crowd with him as a matter of fact. He's got Al Cerdo there in the corner, a really long standing strong trainer manager of fighters in the northern New, New Jersey, New York area. You mentioned, of course, Mr. McGirt, one of his former world champions that he had uh, in the ring, and now he brings another one that he certainly hopes can reach that great goal. But again, at only 21, his future's still ahead of him, and eight victories and two of those by knockouts. Well, when Al Cerdo's high on a kid, you can, uh, you know, yeah, really, that's kudos for the guy because he's a <laughs> he's a no-nonsense guy, and he doesn't, he doesn't throw a bunch of uh, hype out there. Let's head upstairs. Here's our ring announcer, Chuck Cease, with the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a six-round welterweight fight. Get them all, please, and your referee is Mr. John McHale. First up, in the red corner, coming into the Poconos from Patterson, New Jersey. We'll start that one over. First of all, in the red corner. From Scranton, Pennsylvania, wearing black trunks with yellow trim, his record is four wins, 10 losses, one draw. Four of his wins are by knockout. He comes into the fight weighing 140 pounds. Here is Dennis, the boss man, Burley. And his opponent in the blue corner from Patterson, New Jersey with an impressive record of eight victories, no losses and no draws. Two of his victories are by knockout, wearing black trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at 140 pounds. Here is Fred Curio. Yeah. Curio. Yeah. Referee again is John McHale. All right, gentlemen, you were given the rules of the state of Pennsylvania. Are there any questions? No questions. I want you to protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Well, again, Brett Correll getting ready to come out for his ninth professional fight. Turning pro in only June of 1994. Won a four-rounder there over Robert Sierra. And has never been down. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Mr. Burley can come out with. Interesting enough, he's won four. All four of them have been by knockouts. But he, too, has been knocked out a total of six times. Make that three times, excuse me. Yeah, we saw Burley down in Atlantic City a, about a month ago, and he had, although he lost the fight, he had his opponent on the deck. He is a strong puncher. That's pretty much what he relies on. Good combination thrown by Curiel as he goes in on top of him. 140-pounder. You see Burley just powering in on top of him, and John McKeel has to, McKeel, that is, has to go to work early. Round one of a six-rounder here in the welterweight. Nice little fighter, Curiel. You see him down in the pocket there. We're very within himself. No wasted motion or anything. Nice feints. Got a good straight left jab, that's for sure. He's just very relaxed in there. He's just setting things up. Let this, uh, you know, Burley's a grown man and, and Curiel's just a kid, but he's gonna, you know, let this, let the old man use up his strength early in this fight. Just take his time and relax and work his way into this. Burley is 31 years of age. Turned pro back in December of 1988. Matter of fact, he was knocked out in his first fight, but he was not in there with a patsy. Great Basley, the former Canadian champion, uh, stepped in against him, knocked him out in two rounds. God, what weight was that at? That's explained everywhere. I know. <laughs> As Burley throws that looping overhand right hand. It's such an awkward punch, you can catch a good fighter with it because come comes in at kind of a blind, blind angle. 168 was the uh, weight on that uh, Fazdi fight, by the way. Obviously very early in Fazdi's life. <laughs> oh, that jab of <laughs> backed up early there. One of the basic fundamentals of all boxing again, you set it up with a jab and Real is certainly doing that here. 
as he comes in with a double left jab, backing Burley up. A lead right tie, right hand that time was caught, a shot that goes a little south of the border, acknowledged by the referee, and Burley does not want to take any time, though. Half a minute to go in round one. Nice little shifts and feints by Curry out here. He's always on balance. Good, solid little fighter. There's one characteristic of Burley's fight game. Again, as I mentioned, all four of his wins have been knockouts. Three of those have been in the first round, so he does not get to you early on. He struggles a bit to try to win fights. And right now, he's struggling to try to get to Curry out. Looping right hand got through, though. A good look at Dennis Burley as he comes out to answer the bell for round two against an up-and-coming young welterweight. And his 8-0, Freddy okay, Corral. Wait, 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 wait. As he comes out, they clash early in the center of the ring. And Burley with that right hand, if he doesn't land with the glove like he did there, he landed with the forearm and did a lot of damage with it to the side of Curiel's face. But he's, uh, Al Cerdo warned the kid about it in between rounds. He told him, just be careful of that. That's a sucker punch. And you just stay within yourself. And you know, he kind of, you know, feels, I'm sure they scouted Burley because that's the way they take care of their business. They don't just take a fighter uh, sight on scene, but they know that they're going to wear him down and that they got a real prospect here. And as you can see, Burley's not much on form, but he's a strong, he's a 30-year-old man and he's strong and, and uh, heads came together there. Just trying to make sure that nobody got cut. And the referee stopping it for a few moments and then right back to action it goes. You know, two things with that looping right hand, Bob. A, it'll neutralize the left jab. B, it could almost make it even better because if Curiel is able to time that and get underneath quickly enough, he can make a very good punch with that straight left hand on the jab. And also, his corner told him, go up underneath, counter up underneath because that that looping right hand leaves you open. You know, it's hard to beat a good straight, uh, you know, you can't beat a good straight jab with, with a wide looping shot like that, but you could you could trade a jab for a power shot if you can, you know, if you can parry the jab and, and, uh, and take the power. But yeah, you you're see Curiel pick it off right as Burley was launching it. He parried it with his own glove. Curiel tried to pick it up a little bit. He's been a little cautious, waiting for that big right hand by Burley. Starting to work in behind that jab a little better here. Near the end, as you see, a minute 14 to go in round two. And he's trying to throw some straight right hands to the body, which, you know, the longer the fight goes, it's, it's not going to bother him at all. He can he can box distance. He's just a young kid there. He got pushed down behind his head a little bit and caused his, uh, his hook to go low. Coming up later, another of our WBU world champion fights, this time with a super bantamweight and a new champion. Either Max Gomez of Denver, Colorado, or Anton Gilmore of Johannesburg, South Africa. One will walk out of here as the champion on Cedric Kushner's World Championship Boxing. There, Burley tries the hook a little bit, trying to mix it up a little bit on the kid. Muriel. And a good combination by Burl. Good left hand by Carell. But look at Burley stay right in there. Burley's dead game, if nothing else. <laughs> I think you mentioned lacking of skill and certainly finesse, but does not lack for heart as he barrels in on top of Carell. And right now, Freddie's taking a lot of punishment. How severe it is, we're not sure, but he's taking a couple of good punches. Those are right of his own. As the bell sounds. It... Well, if this crowd needed a hot button, Burley and Carell have just touched it at the end of round two with quite a flurry. We'll see which one came out the worst for wear. Burley pooping himself out with all those punches. And Curiel coming out with a couple of pretty good counter punches as he fought off the ropes. Now Curiel, is, he's very fresh at this stage of the fight. I think much more so than Burley. And, and that's what they wanted to do, take advantage of that. The fact that Burley probably hasn't sufficiently recovered by, from that second round onslaught. Okay, clean, clean, clean. Let's go, step back. Referee doing a good job of breaking the fighters, not letting everybody rest. Curiel has gone the last two fights, the full six rounds, a win in September over Roberto Sierra, and the last fight beating uh, Ali Mohammed in New Jersey, winning in six there as well in January. All right, clean, clean, step back, step back. You know, he's a young fighter, Freddie Curiel. He's not, 
you know, grown into himself physically or anything. So, he, you know, he doesn't have that overpowering power, but he's a nice boxer. And because he throws such good short punches, when he does grow into himself as a man, he'll, he'll have a lot more power than he has now. 21 year old, it looks like he's about 16 and still delivering papers. But Jerry Al certainly delivers a pretty good punch here, and Burley is the man that's been on the other end of that, but he's gamely fighting on here in the third round, halfway through. Yeah, Burley's definitely showing a lot of heart here, but it, I think his conditioning's beginning to betray him. Looping left hand again by Curiel. Curiel now becoming one thing a young fighter normally cannot do, Bob, and that, of course, is to try to lean back on some patience. He's just biding his time and working himself in and trying to measure it again here on, Bur on, on Burley. But at the same time, he's winning the fight. You know, he's in control of it, and, and you know, he doesn't really have to rush anything he knows he's not a big puncher burley's looking to you know get the referee involved in this because he knows he's, he's tired and oh nice move by freddie curio leaving dennis burley in the lurch but here comes burley in nothing but dead game now burley's legs have not turned to spaghetti yet but they're certainly linguini i'll tell you that they're getting wobbly he stumbles back out to the center of the ring John McHale again separating him as we close in at the end of round three. This one can't possibly end as well as round two did, but again, they'll fight on into the fourth. Good luck at the young man out of Patterson, New Jersey, and Al Cerna working for him. 8-0 and his record. A couple of wins by a knockout. And again, he's still not happy with... Uh, Freddie's progress to a little daydreaming, he said. It. Well, that's what he does. He's the kind of guy that he gives them some negative reinforcement, and, and the kids, these fighters, they they want to they want to deliver for Al Cerno. They'll do, you know, the kid comes back at the end of the round. Oh, did I do better? Did I do better? I mean, he's trying to he's trying to deliver for him. Burley's trying to quit over in the other corner. He's trying to quit over there right now in between rounds. So, well, I tell you what, and he may have quit because of this. As Carry out glancing one off the top of his head, and that right hand behind it was a devastating one. And Burley just had a wrestling towards the rope. By the way, this is the first time that Burley is set down, other than being thrown down by the referee at the end of the second round. And again, as you pointed out, he's pleading with somebody to get him out of there, and he, he, finally, he finally got an ear that somebody liked, and that's John McClay that finally came up and stops the fight as, again, sitting on the stool is Burley at the end of three rounds. So Fred Curiel again will come up with his ninth victory and will technically get a TKO out of this. And that'll be his third of his young career. Got some good work through three rounds. Certainly the end of that second round was a rather interesting flurry. But again, went back to the business like maybe daydreaming a bit, but did what he needed to do through three rounds. Well, you know, he felt the other guy's strength and he was being a little more cautious than, than Al Cerno wanted him to be. But that's just them bonding together as trainer and fighter and you know the kid learning how to you know follow instructions from his corner let's go upstairs with the official time here again is chuck cease ladies and gentlemen we have a decision in this round in the welterweight division a tko at the end of the third round your winner is fred curio so the youngster from nearby patterson picks up another win by a technical knockout and as we go to the end of the third round you can Quite obviously see that uh, Burley is taking some more punishment. Again, that great right hand, and again, the wrestling tactics are of Burley to try to get himself out of trouble here, Bob. And again, when he got him on the ropes, he was able to come back out, but when he sat down, again, you picked it up quickly. He was pleading just to get out of there, and he finally found somebody that would listen. Birdwood Resort here in Bushkill, Pennsylvania. By the way, what a beautiful